Hey guys, so I was going to do an unboxing of this Trigicon ACOG and I decided to make a video um, just on ACOGs in general and unbox this. So we're going to do both. Um, I have full disclosure, I've already opened this up. Um, so, but I will show, I just want to show you basically how they come. If you don't know, this is the case all of them come with. Then there's a sticker, gives you the serial number, tells you what reticle is on the ACOG. Um, and there is several different uh, reticles. This is a TA31F. Yeah, you can see that now. So, and made in the USA. Trigicon, nothing, nowhere else. So, they all the ACOGs come in this case. Uh, some of the early ones, the real early ones came in a, a different Pelican case. And some of the like mid 2000s came in a like a, a molly pouch for like the military they didn't come in this um so depending on what year a cog you get you may not get this box i know some of the surplus ones obviously don't come with a box at all so um <clears throat> and then this is what they look like um this is a TA31F, so this is technically not the correct RCO optic. Uh, this has a different reticle in it. Uh, instead of the chevron with the uh, lines coming out the side, I'll put a picture in so you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, the reticle that you see right now is what the military ACOGs use, um, and that is what <clears throat> this ACOG here has. Um, but these... Uh, the TA31Fs are a little bit cheaper, and honestly, it doesn't matter to me uh, if it has those lines on it or not. Uh, the other reason I bought a TA31F is because this one is ballistically cal calibrated for a 16-inch barrel, and that's what this is going on. The M4 RCO is calibrated for a 14.5-inch barrel, and the A4 RCO is calibrated for, what you see back there, a 20-inch barrel. <clears throat> so that's why I went with the TA31F. Uh, other than that, just like I said, the price difference. Um, and um, so this is what once you lift this thing guy up here, you you always get a scope coat, you get a lens pen. You've never seen one of these. I've never used one of these. I just keep them in the box. I actually don't even know how to open that up. I thought it just pops up. There we go. A little squeegee. And then a little brush. Oh, I like again. I've never used one of these. Um, oh, it screws on. Okay. <clears throat> and then all your paperwork, sticker, manual, or whatever that is, warranty card, and then your manual. Um, but it tells you how to. Uh, if you've never had an ACOG, you really need to read this manual because it actually tells you how to zero this. These need zeroed at a certain range. Um, and this tells you how to use it. So I, I do suggest you actually go through the manual um, at least once. Like I said, if you've never had it, this manual is kind of... I don't know what the hell happened to it, but it's like falling apart. Anyways, uh, I did order this new. This is supposed to be new. I got this from... Uh, this one I got from Amazon... <clears throat> And uh, my other one I got off eBay. I get a lot of, I actually almost exclusively buy my optics on eBay because it's cheaper. So we'll get that box out of the way. <clears throat> and you can see here, I'll show you this is, like I said, this is the correct military one here. And there's no difference. You can't tell a difference. There's no difference on the side. In fact, this is the military CP. They, they actually... Designate these CP stands for civilian packaging and these ones actually come with the Bible verse on the bottom um, Even though this is still an RCO That's that's the difference. They, they don't put the Bible verse on the ones they ship to the military Which is another reason why they designate these RCOs as CP stands for civilian packaging If I didn't say that <clears throat> so That looks the exact same as this TA 31 F there's no difference, literally. Um, again, you got the Bible verse down there. These Bible verses used to be... Uh, I think they were on this side. They used to be down there. And actually, 
in the um the like embossed in the metal. I don't know why I can't think of what I want to say here, but then <clears throat> they had to scrape them all off because everybody's politically correct as far as I'm concerned. Uh, yeah, they should they should have left those on, but whatever. So, um, anyways, that's that. Uh, here's if you've never seen these adjustment caps. Actually, I'm gonna walk you through this here. We can. I'll show you how to tell a difference between a real ACOG and a fake ACOG. Um, <clears throat> these you can just turn by finger. The older ACOGs, I think, like 2012. Oh no, 2014 or older. You are gonna have to use a coin or something to use them. Uh, so these are only on the newer ACOGs. If you get an ACOG with uh, that, you need a tool to adjust it. That doesn't mean that it's a fake ACOG. That just means it's an older ACOG. So, I, there's real simple ways to tell if these are legit or not. Uh, you go on Trijicon's website, and they have a whole page dedicated to how to tell if a real from a fake. I mean, I don't understand how guys get scammed on these. I guess if you order something, they show pictures of one, and they send you something else. That's different, but... It's super simple. The The biggest first way you can tell is almost every single fake I've ever seen, the Trijicon ACOG here is white, in white lettering. That's an uh, immediate fake, fake, fake. The other way to tell is none of the fakes I've ever seen have this pin in there. If you don't see a pin in the fiber optic here, it's fake. 100% fake, not even close, it's fake. The other way you can tell is... You'll see the serial number there. It says serial number. Now some of the military ones will have the serial number to look a little different up top here. Let me see if this one wants. Yes, this is how the military ones look. So try it. I might. I'll put a picture because I don't think that's gonna. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna show up too well. But you'll see this like one long thing that says uh, D O L F twenty nine. TA-31, and then it says RCO, which stands for Rifle Combat Optic, A-4, which means that this is calibrated for the M16 A-4, and then it has your serial number on the side. And I think all the fakes have a looking like, have the serial numbers exactly like that. But, so you, there is two different ways they put serial numbers on these guys. So keep that in mind. Like I said, the civilian, the TA-31 Fs look like this. The other way you can tell where I was getting at with the serial number. So you got a serial number there, 548. You also have the serial numbers on both these pieces, 548 and 548. If there's no serial number there, there's a problem. You see that? Sorry, I wasn't looking through the viewfinder. Um, also, I think that's pretty much it. And like I said, you probably won't have the Made in USA there on the bottom. But seriously, I mean, it's, it's simple. Is the Trijicon ACOG white? No. The, you know, is it embossed in the middle? Yes. Does it have the roll pin? Yes or no. If it does have the roll pin, this is embossed in the middle, but you don't see a serial number there, there's something wrong with it. I wouldn't even bother with it. Because I don't know what's wrong. I'm not saying it's a fake. I'm not saying it's real. I'm just saying I wouldn't mess with it. Thing you can um, do is um you used to be able to you can still call Trijicon with the serial number and they can tell you the date of manufacture uh also they just did this i just saw this i actually didn't know they did this until i was reading some of the reviews for this on amazon apparently within the last two years or so they put a uh on their website they put a, a thing where you can enter the serial number of your acog and it'll tell you if It'll say like likely associated with an ACOG with a with a Trijicon product, which I think is kind of dumb. Um, and I guess if it's not, if the serial number is not, it'll say uh, not likely associated with a Trijicon product. But then it also says in the bottom like we cannot verify unless we have it in our hands. I think that's kind of dumb. I if I was gonna buy one online. And I could look at it, the serial number. I, I wouldn't buy one unless it had actual pictures of the ACOG either. 
uh, I would call with a serial number. Just call them. They're super nice. I've called them, literally called them, not recently, but in, you know, before. I've called them with like five or six different serial numbers five or six times. And every time they've been super nice. I mean, Trijicon is, their customer service is absolutely awesome. Now, one thing that the RCOs come with in the box, they cut the RCOs will come with this kill flash. And the TA31Fs will not come with a kill flash. So I have a kill flash here. Let me show you how this goes on. Alright, I'll show you how this guy goes on here. And this is just a kill flash. All it does is cut down so you can't see a reflection on the dome here. Uh, they're quite simple to put on. They literally just sit right in there. Um, obviously, this has to be around the base here. Just goes on just like that. And put it in somewhat gentle. You don't want to scratch the lens up. There we go. Nope. There we go, it's hard to do with the camera in my face. So that's how they sit. They do sit with a little downward pressure like that. I have taken and put in some stuff there so it sits straight, but I, it's fine, that's how they all sit, so. And then that's how it, you know, I mean, that's an ACOG. Can't really show, oh, there you go. You see the Chevron, but you can't really see the, the reticle itself. So let me go through this here once. I did get some information on uh ACOGs themselves uh so they were so this ACOG was actually uh invented and developed in 1986 um there were ACOGs that were actually used in Operation Just Cause in Panama and in Operation Desert Storm now those would have been the TA01s without the fiber optic this fiber optic and if you don't know how these things work is there's no batteries on this at all. There's no way to turn the brightness up, the brightness down, nothing. Uh, light gathers into this red or this fiber optic here, and it bounces off some mirrors and some other crap in here, and it lights the it lights the chevron. If there's no light, no ambient light, there's actually uh, nuclear waste inside here, and that is what it's called tritium, and that's what lights up the the chevron at night. Um, but even if you don't have, cause the Chev or the tritium lasts like 15 years, even if you don't have tritium at night, uh, and there's some kind of light, like the, like it was a full moon or whatever, you're still going to get the, the reticle lit up a little bit because of the fiber optic. Um, so I absolutely love these things for that reason that you don't need batteries or anything. Um, and, and the Marine Corps, if you don't know, obviously, I'm sure you know, you've seen it. Obviously, that's why I put the, uh, ACOGs on the clone, or on the clone rifles. Um, the Marine Corps and the Army, but the Marine Corps adopted the ACOG as the RCO, and it was the first ever RCO, which again, RCO stands for Rifle Combat Optic. It really doesn't have anything to do with the ACOG. It's just a military term and it stands for Rifle Combat Optic. If the Marines or whoever ever actually leave the ACOG and go to whatever else, that optic will then become the RCO. Um, so, and uh, <clears throat> these things, I I use these things a lot even for non-clone projects. I've had uh, several of these. There's a couple of them. There, there's a uh, 6 power. There's a 1.5 power. There's a... There's, two different three power ones there's a smaller three power one and then there's a ta11 which is a big son of a bitch it's bigger than this and uh that one has really good eye relief on it uh actually i think they all have pretty good eye relief on them except the four powers uh these only have you know an inch and a half of eye relief so if you're looking at an acog and you're you're turned off by the inch and a half eye relief. Well, you can look at some of the other models of ACOG. Um, but you do have to be careful because there's like four or five different reticles 
but they're all a little different. So like this ACOG is ballistically calibrated for M193 out of a 16 inch barrel, so 55 grain uh, out of a 16 inch barrel. This ACOG here, the RCO, and it'll, oh well, the RCO, the A4, is ballistically calibrated for a 20 inch barrel and with 62 grain ammo. Now basically what that means is there's a ballistic drop compensator in here and I'll put it in the picture again so you can see. You see how it goes down. This is, uh, what does it start at? Four, five, six, seven, something like that. And um, what that means is if I put this ACOG on this rifle, the BDC won't line up. It, you won't be 100% on target. So make sure you get on Trigicon's website or you read up and don't just order an ACOG for any rifle. Make sure it's going to match what you want. Uh, I don't think there is no changing the reticles in these, so you're you're kind of stuck with what you got. Um, you can use whatever ACOG for whatever rifle, just make sure you zero it. And that's the other thing is when you zero these, the ballistic drop compensator is in meters, it's not in yards. So I always zero these at 100 yards, and um, I the the BDC has always been somewhat on. I mean, on enough for me to hit a man's last target. I mean, I'm shooting at 100 yards and in, so even at 200 yards, I haven't had any issues making hits. Uh, not that I rarely shoot at 200, but um, so just keep that in mind as well. I personally don't think there's any better optic. These are about 1,200 bucks, a thousand to 1,200 bucks, depending on where you get them, and I think they're worth that. I mean, you can. I mean, these things have taken AK rounds. And you've still people have still been able to 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 uh, engage after they've taken a you know an AK round to them. So I I definitely think they're worth that. Now, do you need that? No, as a civilian, no, you don't. Uh, but it's still cool. Okay, so the last thing I want to read off lead off with is this here. So Trigicon updated their website. I guess probably the same time they put those the serial number thing that you can just punch in on their website. Uh, but this was cool. Uh, this is by Major General uh, J.N. Mattis, uh, Commanding General, 1st Marine Division, Operation Iraqi Freedom. And it says, the ACOG mounted on the M16 service rifle has proven to be the biggest improvement in lethality for the Marine infantrymen since the introduction of the M1 Garand in World War II. Um, now, technically the M1 Garand was introduced well before World War II, but the uh, Marines thought they knew better. They learned a hard lesson on Grottle Canal. Anyways, different video. <laughs> so, I, I mean, they're worth every penny of it. The field of view on these things is ridiculous. Bar none, the best field of view I've ever seen on an optic. The glass clarity is on a different level. I have friends that won't spend the money on the ACOGs and then when they shoot this they're like are you sure that's only four power I'm like yeah it's only four it's power. HD glass and then with this huge field of view it just makes it seem like it's a lot more than four power anyways this video is getting ridiculously long I could sit and talk about ACOGs uh, and M4s and M16s forever I'm gonna cut it short uh, obviously there's nothing I can really say that you know for the ACOG that hasn't already been said, literally jump on Trigicon's website and you can just read pages on pages of service members' testimonies for the ACOGs. And just, not just service members, but anybody's testimony. Uh, there's, you know, there is some people that say that ACOGs are outdated and they like their LPVOs. The problem with LPVOs, from what I understand, I don't use them. But from what I've heard, you know, people say is, you know, they're always on the wrong zero or they're always on the wrong magnification. You're constantly dialing up and back to get to where you need to be. This is for power. You can use this to clear a room. I'm not saying it's the best, but you can do it. I practice with this M16A4 when my wife's not home. Sometimes I'll practice. I'll stick the, you know, the butt plate up over my shoulder, stick my thumb up on the uh, front sight block there. And with both eyes open, I can, you know, 
clear room, maybe not the fastest, but I can do it with the ACOG. Um, and now I have a nice uh, M4A1 with an EOTech on it, and that is my go-to. Uh, these are obviously backup rifles, but uh, anyways, so I, I love ACOGs. Obviously, I'm sitting here talking about it for 25 minutes. I'm going to try to cut this video down, but... Anyways, thanks for watching. If you have any co uh, questions about ACOGs, you know, let me know. I'll see if I can answer them. The other th one last thing. Uh, don't be afraid to buy these used. Buy them surplused. Uh, I mean, get them surplused in surplus condition for 650 bucks, 700 bucks. So, and you can send them to Trigicon. They'll refurbish them. No problems. Like 155 It's probably more now. It's probably like 200 and some. But either way, they can Trigicon will refurbish them. And, you know, they're good to go. You don't need the um, another mount. You can just run the TA-51. That's what I run. I think that's what these are called. The TA mount, TA-51 mount. Uh, I just run the TA-51 mount mainly for cloning purposes. But uh, you can buy a nicer mount if you want. Or you can just run this. Uh, they do torque these down from the factory. So you don't have to worry about them coming loose. Anyways, I uh, hope you guys learned something. Uh, and if you have any questions, let me know. If you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. I have more stuff coming. Just takes time to get the videos out. So, anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good day.